Welcome to an introduction to managerial accounting brought to you by Parkbench Tutors and narrated by David Hopcroft. For more information about Parkbench Tutors, please visit parkbenchtutors.com. In this short podcast, we introduce you to costing by considering two methods, full costing and variable costing. We shall show how the income statement is produced from each method. In the second podcast, we will go on to consider the effects if units produced are greater or less than the unit sales, which is more typically the case. So what are the differences between the two methods? The essential difference relates to the treatment of the fixed manufacturing overhead. Under full costing, this is treated as a product cost. Under variable costing, fixed manufacturing overhead is treated as a period cost. You will also come across other terms and may find full costing referred to as absorption costing. For external reporting purposes, a company is required to use full costing, but for managerial accounting more information can usually be obtained from variable costing. Whichever method we use, the costs are those of direct materials, direct labour, variable manufacturing overhead, fixed manufacturing overhead, selling costs and administrative costs. Remember that selling and administrative costs are treated as period costs and, until sold, other costs are product costs. All product costs for goods not sold are regarded as inventory, whilst the period costs will be treated as expenses. Under variable costing, period costs include selling and administrative costs and also the fixed manufacturing overhead. Product costs will only include direct material, direct labour and variable manufacturing overhead. Period costs are treated as expenses for the period in which they occur. The problems presented by full costing are related to including fixed and variable costs together, making it difficult to perform a clear analysis of what is happening. By including costs in this way at the end of the year, some depreciation costs remain in inventory. The advantage of variable costing is that this problem is removed and all the depreciation would be accounted for in the period expensed. Consider the sales and cost information for sunset sales. The number of units produced and sold are shown, the selling price is shown and the variable and fixed costs are shown. In our example, we are going to start by considering what happens when the number of units produced is equal to the number of units sold. You may already have guessed that the income statements produced by each method should be the same, since there will be no inventory left at the end of the year. Nevertheless, let us see how this is calculated. We will start with the full costing statement. Sales are calculated by multiplying the number of units that are produced by the selling price. We have highlighted the calculation here. Direct material costs are calculated by multiplying the amount per unit by the number of units produced. Direct labour is calculated in the same way. Multiply the amount of labour per unit by the number of units produced. Variable manufacturing overhead is the amount of variable overhead per unit multiplied by the number of units produced. Fixed manufacturing overhead is now entered. To obtain the gross margin we subtract the total of costs that we have calculated from the figure for sales. We now calculate the selling expense, which will be the fixed expense plus the variable expenses for the number of units sold. The administrative expenses are then added. The selling and administrative expenses are now subtracted from the gross margin. This gives our figure for net income $213,000. Now we shall take a look at the income statement produced as a result of variable costing. The figure for sales remains the same. The sales per unit multiplied by the number of units sold. 
The figures for direct material, direct labour and variable manufacturing overhead are calculated in the same way as for a full costing statement. We are now going to separate the variable selling costs from the fixed selling costs. The variable selling costs will be the variable cost per unit multiplied by the number of units sold. There are no variable administrative costs in our example, so we shall now enter all the fixed costs for manufacturing, overhead, selling and for administrative expense. We subtract all the expenses from the sales figures and we have a figure for net income of $213,000. This illustrates that when units produced are equal to units sold, then the net income will be the same whichever method we use. Although net income is the same, note that we enter the variable selling costs differently. Uh, to understand what happens when more boats are produced than sold, we need to look at how we would determine unit costs under full costing. The unit costs will be equal to the sum of the variable production costs and fixed production costs divided by the number of units produced. The full costing income statement is shown using this method. Significant change is that of cost of goods sold. The cost of goods sold is determined using the unit cost of goods sold. Under full costing we take direct materials, direct labour and variable overhead, multiply this by units produced, add fixed manufacturing overhead and divide by units produced. The unit cost is multiplied by actual units sold to get cost of goods sold. Our figure for net income is still $213,000. The presentation of the income statement under variable costing also gave the same figure for net income, $213,000. Remember, this is only the situation when units produced is equal to units sold. We can now go to our second podcast to show what happens when units produced differs from units sold. This ends our third pod first podcast on fixed and variable costing, brought to you by Parkbench Tutors and narrated by David Hopcroft. Thank you for watching and for listening. We wish you success in your studies. For more information about Parkbench Tutors, please visit parkbenchtutors.com.